Welcome back. My name is Candace Sanderson, and thank you for joining me in part two of having an out-of-body experience. You know, it's all just a matter of time and space. In the last episode, we began this series on out-of-body experiences, and I gave you homework. The homework was to observe and notice any transitions into the subtler realms that occurred. Hopefully, you could notice them as they occurred. We know these things happen all the time. So did you notice those spaces during any nighttime dreams? How about daydreams, lucid dreams, or maybe intuitive hints? Noticing is that first step that will help you gain mastery over the tools we will use to develop for navigating these 5D spaces. We're still learning about stepping aside so that our energy body, our spirit, our non-physical form, there's so many terms for that, but it's allowing that aspect of us to move beyond the physical and then interact with what I call is the 5D environment that non-physical realm of energy. I'm sharing information from my messengers and my personal experience. When we understand the hows and whys, then we will be able to make and use non-physical tools. By the time we get to the tools, you'll also see how effective they are. We ended the last episode talking about the TEA formula, thoughts, energy, action. That is what operates everything. It's what actually turns off the woo-woo and brings understanding. There are no secrets here when we realize that everything is energy. And of course, there's a shout out to Nikola Tesla, whose famous quote says it all. If you want to know the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Thoughts manifest into the desired action when the energy is right. If you have an intention to do something, but then let's say you doubt it. So what's happened is, think of the law of attraction, you've brought in the energy of doubt. So you manifest precisely that. No longer what your intention was, but the doubt. Awareness of this TEA formula can help you throughout the day to connect those dots between our thoughts and actions. So now let's look at expanding consciousness. That's an action that positions us into this seemingly magical space where we have access to unlimited information. This is a space, a field where everything is connected. In this episode, we will look at the POE point of existence. We will look at time and we will see how we can manipulate the perception of time by expanding our awareness. It's actually easy to do, and when we do that, the results can be profound. Why do I say that? Well, you see, our body has natural GPS capabilities when traveling in the 5D. I'll show you precisely how to use that GPS and how to set a bookmark, just like setting a GPS pin. Let's jump in and let me share a few things I've learned from my messengers about consciousness. But first, let's just define consciousness. What is it? That's an easy answer. Consciousness is awareness. Most of the time, we go about our lives with total awareness of who we are or who we think we are. We're wrong, of course, but most of us don't know any better. We think that we are our physical bodies. My head hurts. My hair looks great. My stomach is growling. It's a my, my, my universe. So why do we think we are our physical bodies? It's because our awareness is there. 
This leads to another concept from the messengers, the POE, point of existence. At first, this was a difficult theory to comprehend, but with time, the messenger simplified it. Now, it's so easy. The POE, the point of existence, is simply a way to visualize consciousness. Think of your POE as a dot, a small particle. And that particle is usually tucked in so comfortably within our bodies that we think that we are our physical selves. Before I retired, when I would attend a workshop of, say, less than 50 participants, quite often we would go around the room and briefly introduce ourselves before getting started. I'd loved it when this would happen. I would immediately get out a sheet of paper. I would draw a line down the center, making two columns. I would then make tally marks based on how people introduce themselves. One column was the I am column. The second column was my name is column. Very often, the only tally mark in the my name is was mine. Because back then, I knew I was not my physical body. How could I say I am Candace Sanderson? That's not who I am. It's just a name. Now, back then, I could not define who I was or what I was for that matter. But I knew what I was not. I was not physical matter. I was not that body. So after having this knowledge of what I was not for so long, the foundation was established for when I was ready to learn what I was. And that is when I learned about the POE. Let's now look at time because time is very important. It's an aspect that has to do with expanding awareness and out-of-body experiences. We need to see how time and the POE, our consciousness, our awareness, interact and affect each other. Time. I thought time was linear, that it moved from event A to event B in a straightforward path. If we superimpose a dot, that POE, on that line, we will see that dot moving dot after dot in a direct, straightforward manner. Time marches forward only on that straight as a ruler timeline. However, the messengers told me that my point of view was too limited, that time is not linear. It's much more fluid than a straight line. It's malleable and flexible. We've all experienced time slowing and speeding, right? I mean, it is very slow during a root canal, yet it speeds up during a really fun event. Time flies when we do not want it to. So yes, I think we can agree that time really is not as straightforward as we thought. My messengers showed me that the track from event A to event B is not a straight line. It's curvy, much more like a sine wave. So now when we superimpose the track of our POE dot on that curvy line, we see that time becomes a little more complicated. Okay, so far this is easy to see, right? Now let's introduce expanded awareness. The POE is a way to visualize consciousness. So when we expand, we are literally stretching that dot into a circle. And as we continue to expand that in our imagination, we can make it into a sphere. Now it represents expanded awareness. Our POE becomes a globe. It is no longer a dot, which is a particle form. It becomes a globe of existence. When the messengers first showed this to me, I did not realize how significant it was. I now understand that when our POE dot shifts into a three-dimensional sphere, 
we've just moved from that particle state of quantum physics to a waveform, to a field of energy. And as a globe, our awareness now expands outside the physical body. And the messengers have told me that it's not just an empty sphere. It is filled with life force energy. And that is so significant. Imagine I'm holding this large sphere, my expanded awareness. Now look what happens when I superimpose that huge globe on our curvy timeline in its expanded state. Our POE, our consciousness, our awareness now encompasses much more of the timeline. And the more our awareness expands, it contains even more of the timeline. So now our perception of time is significantly altered. It's easy to imagine, but I want you to think how significant this is, what this means. The messengers have just shown us how psychics work. When in this expanded field, we become aware of the past maybe lifetimes ago. In this state, you can also peek into the probabilities of the future and see what might occur. I love the simple explanations from the messengers. They explain lofty concepts and they make those ideas so much easier to remember because they're logical. Next, I hear people asking, well, that's great, but how do we expand our awareness? There are many answers on how to do that. Some work for some people, but not all will work for all people. Maybe they will in a few months. You'll have to be the judge of that. You will know when something works for you, but here are some suggestions. You can expand awareness through meditations like I do through Monroe Institute's Expand app. Some achieve this expansive state through prayer, near-death experiences, lucid dreams. Others have spontaneous occurrences when they walk in nature. Some do this through ceremonial use of plant-based medicines or drumming circles. And of course, we do this every single night when we dream. But once you achieve that greater than you are state with awareness, you dip your toes into unity consciousness. You begin to taste infinity. You realize you are connected to everybody and everything beyond time and space. You are now operating within that field state, no longer a particle form. You are a waveform that is connected to everything. Regardless of when or how it occurs, once you begin to experience this greater than yourself expansion, it becomes easier. This brings me to another concept that I mentioned earlier our innate GPS system and how we can use it to set a pen, to set a bookmark. I won't go too deep into the details, but just know that the messengers report that everyone has an emotional guidance system. And once you have experienced a state of expansion and made contact, whether it's with an angel, a guide, a deceased loved one, visited a past life, travel to galaxies unknown, the list goes on and on. But once you've been there, you can return. This is a natural built-in GPS system that everybody has, but very few actually realize it's there. But once we know about it, we can establish bookmarks to return to any place in the 5D, just like setting a pin on our GPS in our cars. Monroe Institute calls this setting a PIC code. When the 5D connections occur, 
the process begins. The messengers tell me that with this initial connection, an electromagnetic path is laid. This path allows for safe passage back home to the 3D. Now, why is that important? I know of people that would like to have out-of-body experiences, but they have a little bit of concern or fear. What if I'm out there and I can't find my way back? Well, you won't get lost. It's easy. Bob Monroe used to say, just wiggle your toes or your fingers and you'll be right back in your body. I have more on that later. But making those 5D connections it's like walking through a field of waist high snow. It's easy to find your path back home and it's equally easy to return to that magical place in the 5D. If you've made a connection to a loved one who's passed away, you can set a bookmark like dropping a pin and your internal guidance system will return you there upon request. So the key is to get there, make that first trudge in the snow. And of course, with each trek across that waist deep snow, the track becomes even more pronounced, easier to find. You are forming a channel that keeps a direct path open. I give this example to show how the messengers work with me. They communicate in very simple, easy to understand, concepts, often accompanied by drawings and other images so that I don't misinterpret their communications. What I did not realize at the time was that they were giving me tools. I understood that they were explaining how I'd gotten somewhere in the 5D, but most of my trips occurred spontaneously without any intention or stated desire on my part. I had not attempted to go somewhere in particular. I might, for example, be at a meditation. I would be open and I would let my energy soar, but I didn't tell myself, well, today I'm going to visit the realms of light or do soul retrievals. Back then, it seemed more genuine if I simply found myself in these extraordinary spaces. So it never entered my mind that these were tools that I could use and share with others. Now I know that I was trying out the tools, the tools that I didn't even know were tools, but I knew that they worked and I knew how they worked. Going back to that TEA formula, I saw how my thoughts became things that manifested into action. During one set of conversations with the messengers, they gave me homework. We were having a conversation. Well, actually, I was listening to their conversations directed at me on how to block unwanted energies. After explaining about the TEA formula, they told me to come up with five different ways to block frequencies that were, for whatever reason, bothersome to me. This was homework. So being the good student, I did. And when the messengers reviewed my homework, which they did a few days later, I realized that what I'd come up with worked. In this series, you too will learn to develop tools that will work for you. Tools for healing, if that's what you want. Tools for protection. Tools to boost your energy. Tools that will help you expand your awareness into the 5D and go farther into those spaces than just that close by astral realm, if that's what you want. Here's a question to consider. Why have your energy body roll out and hang out in your neighborhood? when you can take a faster mode of transportation and go farther. Why not slip into a subtler energy body? Remember, we talked about the different energy bodies in the last episode. So why not take one of those instead of the most convenient or the closest one to your 3D body? 
It's like the difference between choosing a tricycle or a Lamborghini. You will use what we've learned here to build your own toolbox that will allow you to these places beyond the physical time and time again. I want to keep these episodes short and I see I did not quite finish the basics, so I will do that next time. But for now, let's talk about homework. I want you to remember that TEA formula, thoughts, energy, action, and see how it's working throughout the day. I want you to think about time and come up with examples of when you've noticed that time slows or speeds up. When it does, take a second to realize that our perception of time is related to our state of awareness. So what occurred when you felt this time distortion? Is there anything in particular that you can identify? What was it? In the next episode, we will bring in another aspect that can help us expand. I will introduce a portal that helps us move from our particle state to a waveform with ease. Until next time, remember the importance of being kind, not only to others, but to yourself. Did you know that kindness is an important aspect of our emotional guidance system, our innate GPS? It is. I am always appreciative when people subscribe, if you haven't already, and when people comment, especially on your homework or anything related to this episode. I welcome any likes and shares. So until next time, happy travels and goodbye.